question you know you mentioned with a, a, a lot of the studio work you were very often playing acoustic guitar yeah and that made me think of all the you know your passion for bossa nova and the work that you've yeah. also done with guys like sergio mendez you know i'm wondering yeah. how that came about and was bossa nova guitar something you were you you were passionate about you know in, back in the early days or it was it's something you discovered later. That, that was, interesting enough, that was uh, I just wrote down all of these influences and things. That was another thing when I was before I even started playing, and and I don't know if we talked about this, uh, but there was a, a they always said she she wasn't Brazilian she she was. Uh, a Brazil, not Brazilian, but she was from uh, uh, another country, close by. And, and Carmen Miranda, her name was. Oh, okay. Have you ever heard the name? Uh, yeah. And oh, yeah. She, she had, she had a, a, she did a lot in the Disney movies. There was always a little spot where she would perform with her little orchestra. They were, uh, it was a, uh, uh, Car uh, Jose Carioca who was a Cavaqueño player and he had an authentic Brazilian group and they had all these rhythms and that just wow. knocked the shit out of me. You know, I love that sound. And that always, that was always in my head until I, I always loved the Latin music, you know, and, and the, the, the straight eighth kind of feeling and, the, and that kind of rhythm intrigued me. So, that's how I, I got that. And then later on in life, it came up that I, I connected with uh, uh, Sergio and, and I met Sergio before he signed with Herb. I did two or three albums with Sergio. I see. And uh, then he, he joined the A&M, which was Herb's label. And then I did another couple of albums with him uh, with with uh, well, on Herb's label, I so uh, you know I did I did a lot of recording and I, and I was in the studios because the bossa nova got real popular and I was kind of noted as being one of the the guys that could do that that kind of music you know and uh, anyway that that I always love I still love that music it's my favorite uh, oh. and I can play. That groove is uh, exciting, you know. That's wonderful, wonderful. Yeah, I mean, it's guitar yeah. music. It's just so great. Um, oh, good. Okay. Speaking yeah. speaking of uh, accompaniment, because I, I know you have a long list of, of credits, you know, accompanying people, but uh, it seems like one of the earlier people that you worked with was, was Peggy Lee. Uh, well, I, I started with Peggy, I think, in about... 1962, and I worked with her on and off uh, for so many years, uh, even like when I was with, uh, after I left Herb, you know, I, I, she would call me if she was going on tour and stuff mm -hmm. like that, you know, up until in, into the 80s, you know, I, I always, oh, wow. I always worked with her some, and, and uh, I did several albums with her, you know and worked uh, several times at uh, Basin Street East or she, she would do her show. She was, uh, I really loved her. She was, she was great. A lot of people didn't get, didn't get along with her, but she really, she taught me a lot. You know, I conducted for her, uh, the, the, the orchestra for her. And I mean, it wasn't just 
uh, it wasn't just a band where you say one, two, three, four note. There was a thing that happened uh, that she did an album that Johnny Mandel did the uh, charts on. And there were the whole album had tempo changes and odd meters and everything like that. And uh, uh, I wound up, well, it's, a, it's kind of a long story. She, she always would get into a scene with her uh, people she was working with. She was notorious for that. She, so in the midst of rehearsing for this show, she fired this one guy that was conducting. And so we were still rehearsing. And I, I went, I remember going one day and I said, I said, Peggy, who's going to be conducting for you? And she looked at me, she said, you are. And I said, <laughs> Hey, I don't know anything about conducting, you know? And, and luckily the piano player was a pretty good conductor and, but she didn't want to use him, but he was at every rehearsal. And when I started doing cutoffs and things like that, if I did something that wasn't really good, he would nail me at the end and say, Hey, watch your cutoff and watch this. And, and so I, I wound up opening uh, in Vegas with, with her, with this, with not just a band, it was like a string section and, and a band and, wow. and we did all the intricate music. And I had the, you know, I played, I, I did the whole thing with the guitar strapped on my back and we conduct <laughs> and play all at the same time. And it was great, you know, wow. anyway, that was a good experience. I love, I love her, you know, Peggy. That's fantastic. It was a special person for me. Yeah. So, and, you know, just sailing through all those, uh, you know, being in California, there's so many great players here. And I had a chance to, you know, finally get with uh, Ted Green and, 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 and work with him and, and right. play with him. And actually, I did uh, recorded uh, several tracks, just two guitars that are uh, they're they're on a couple of uh, uh, albums that that I re uh, released a guitar. Wow! You know, I'm gonna have to uh, I'm gonna have to track those down. Yeah, I I gotta make a a copy of them. I I, I think I have uh, most of them, but you know, through, let's see. I'm just looking. So you know, we got got through. Well, we got through yeah. Jeff Wayne. Well, we got through. I studied from Charlie Bird when I was in, in Washington, because he, he was studying from Segovia and he's, he oh, was a yeah. really fine concert, concert artist. And, uh, I, I was taking lessons from him when I was in the air force in Washington, you know? And, uh, then, uh, when I came out here, I never did get to, well, uh, I never did get to Manhattan school of music, but, <laughs> but I did go to city college and studied from, uh, there was a teacher there that was brilliant. Uh, his name is Leonard Stein. He was a, a protege and, and, and a, a proofreader for, for uh, Schoenberg. And he could read anything you put in front of him. He could read a piano, he could read a score and, and, and play it by looking at, you know, he was brilliant wow. and, and he, was, he was a great teacher. I took a, a couple of years I took every class that he, even music history, because he was so prolific at details, and and he was he, he just he, he was wonderful. So I, I did that in nineteen nineteen sixty two, and uh, eventually there's a, there's yeah. a name we also we haven't mentioned yet, but one of the things that you're known for among guitar players is the amazing work you, you did with, with Joe Pass. Oh, of course, yeah. And I was wondering if you could shed a little light on, well, first, how did you guys meet and how did you come to start your collaboration? Well, I, I forgot when, when Joe was live one day, uh, somebody asked me, you know, or when, when we met, and I couldn't remember. <laughs> uh, my memory wasn't good then either. It's still it's worse now. But... Joe said, don't you remember you called me? I, I called him because I was going on the road. I called him to sub. For, I didn't know. I didn't know him. I called him and he subbed for me with the band that I was working oh, with okay. here. So he worked a couple of weeks and then we was, connected. Was it with Peggy he, Lee? 
I remember you us know, talking about this one day. I've gone out with Peggy at the time. I don't know whoever I was touring with, probably Peggy. And so Joe took my gig here for a couple of weeks while I was gone. And uh, that's how we connected. He was still he was still at Sinanon, which was a, where he cleaned up his, uh, you know, he was a junkie for like 13 years of his life. And he, he, he went through this place in Santa Monica called Sinanon. And there were a lot of, uh, a, a lot of musicians there that, you know, uh, he, he worked with. And, uh, but I, I met, that's when I met Joe and I used to go down to Sinanon just to, they, you had a jam night and, and play with him. And that's how that whole thing started. And then he was recording f for Pacific Jazz, and uh, uh, he had a couple of albums that he had to do. Mm -hmm. And then he, his album, he, and and we wound up doing uh, the Jango. you know the, the duo thing, uh, oh. the two guitar thing, among among other things. We did another album called uh, Movie Themes, and uh, Charlie Hayden. It's a bass player. Do you know that name, Charlie Hayden? Oh, yeah. Charlie, Charlie was at Synanon at the same time. You know, he was oh, cleaning up I his act, too. You know? <laughs> so so uh, okay. that album, those albums are, are, are great, you know, and the, the things that we did. Uh, are, are you uh, on for Django? Aren't you on that as well? Yeah. Yeah, 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 it was. Yeah, yeah, we, a legendary we spent, album. We spent a lot of time on, you know, the the beginning of that. Well, the thing that pissed me off is Joe and I. I remember we're at, at his at his apartment in Santa Monica, and we had rehearsed all these. I played like a a second part, the chords underneath his chords, mm -hmm. and it was like we worked. At, uh, Oh, we worked on it a lot, you know, and got the thing and recorded it. But whoever mixed the goddamn thing, they they didn't mix my guitar in with it. So it was just Joe, which is enough anyway. But but later on, when it was re-released, oh. uh, they re-released it and they did add the second guitar because I called, I forget what his name was, but he had, they had remixed, he had the original masters and and called me one time and I told him about it. I said, when you do this, I said, check the two guitars and they actually mixed it on the, the most recent, uh, that was a long time ago, but it was the, the, the newest version of it, you know? So anyway, that, uh, then 10, you know, I had a chance to hang, hang uh, a lot with, with Ted and, uh, also, the other guy that uh, what about Lenny Bro? Is, was he in the? Yeah, area? that's what I was. I was just looking about Lenny. I first met Lenny in 1960. He he did an album at uh, at uh, Shelley Shelley's Manhole which was a jazz club here. Mm -hmm. And he, uh, uh, anyway, I went there to see him and, and we started hanging out. And so he, he stayed here for a couple of years and, and we would get together and, uh, and play into the wee small hours, you know, but God, he was, he was, a, uh, I'm sure you listen to some of his stuff. Oh with, yeah. Uh, he's yeah, part of the harmonics, you know, and, uh, uh, you know, Jay Graydon, mm. I remember hanging with, with him. I, I was the one that I heard Jay play one night at, at a club, and all of a sudden I heard him do those harmonic things, and I, I, I approached him. I, I said, where did you get those things from? He said, oh, he said, uh, Jay Graydon is doing it, you know. And then I told him, well, I have a bunch of recordings that I did that we were pl playing and I gave him uh, a whole bunch of stuff that he hadn't heard. And he turned them on to Ted Green. These, these things that, 
and I didn't do any of the harmonic things. I mean, I fool around a little with it, but uh, I used to, you, you know, but I haven't tried it in a long time. Uh, but anyway, that's, that, that's when, when I, when I, I met him, we did a lot of playing and then he, he didn't stay after two years. He had, he moved back. He would come back occasionally. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and then, I, you know, he was working at uh, Dante's here and I remember going to see him and I was working with Herb at the time. And we were, I remember we were on a flight when I heard that he, he died, you know, he, they found him in the, in the, in the swimming pool. He was drowned, you know? Yeah. Which I, I read, read the story. Uh, anyway, that was, uh, I just found some stuff of his that, that has been released. And it's just unbelievable the way he maneuvered all of that stuff and then played these little comping things that sound like another guitar player was here. You know? Right, right. <laughs> yeah. Again, something else that, that you're really known for that's really become an institution is, you know, John Pisano's Guitar Night. And, oh, yeah. you know, I was, I was curious, you know, I was never clear what the backstory on that was and how that all began. Well, the Guitar Night idea came from Dante's and, and uh, Dante's started that oh, quite a few years, years before I, I came up with, the, I suggested maybe doing a take on it because it was very popular. But, but uh, the first one, Bob, I think Bob Bain was on it, and and uh, uh, George, maybe George Van Epps, and and they would get, they would have a, a guitar night, you know, Howard Roberts, uh, a couple of nylon string players, and they always had a, a guitar night, and it was successful. But then it just kind of phased out, and uh, that was it. But when we started. I was working with my wife, Jean, and, and we worked at this club, a uh, club called Papa, Papa Sean. And we were in Pasadena for a couple of, a couple of years. And then they opened other clubs. They opened one here and one in Beverly Hills. And we went into, uh, we, we were working in, in the one here in, uh, in the Valley. And, uh, the manager was setting up the club and he, he wanted to get some other nights filled up with something that would be, you know, and he asked me about, he said, you have any ideas? He, he said, you know, we could get some people in on a, on a, a an off night. Right. I said, well, yeah, well, let's, let's do a guitar night. And he liked it. So, so we started a guitar night and that was it. That was the beginning at Papa Sean. In, in the valley here, and that when went and, and when was that? Sorry to interrupt. Yeah, when w- was when when was that? Ninety three, I think. Oh, okay, ninety three. Wow, I think it was ninety three, but it went for twenty three years, and we and we did it every week. We did every Tuesday. We we did it on Tuesday. We did every Tuesday, and uh, you know, I had guy guys from all over the world, you know, players that Ulf, you know, Ulf Wakanius, you know, Ulf. Oh, yeah. I never met him. He called me one time and he said, hey, Pisano, he said, I, I want to do guitar night. He said, I'm coming out with, I'm coming out with Oscar Peterson. He said, we got, we're opening at uh, the club. He said, but if I come out early, can I could come on Tuesday and, and I want to do I'd like to do the guitar and I, uh, yeah. so, you know, we, we became buddies and, and he did it. He's done it. So, you know, several times, you know, uh, and, and a lot of other people, you know, I've had people come in and sit in and, uh, and people come in and, and do it. Uh, I've, I've seen all the, the beautiful photos over the years uh, that Bob Barry shot, in, including the oh, calendar yeah, that he's he got, gave me. Yeah. That book is, that, that book is great. Yeah, all the photos. It's a really, yeah. really a who's who. Everyone's in there. Yeah, everybody's yeah. played there. For you know, 
anyway, we'll start. The last one we did was before this whole, this this whole uh, right the COVID. But yeah, that, and that the last started. one was at the baked potato, right? It was at, it was at the baked potato, and it was the third of March, and uh, and I took uh, Lee Renard. I got him to do it, and uh, in fact, I talked to him last week, and and he said, "Boy, I'm glad we got that in." And everybody, it was like really a smash. It was great. You know, we sold out. The club loved it, and uh, as soon as things resume, we'll we'll get back there and start it up again. But. This, this year so far, that was it. <laughs> we did we did January and February, uh, and and March, and now, no, you know, none of the clubs are happening at all. Oh yeah, it's it's pretty yeah. dead. It's just starting again. You know where I'm at too. I mean we've same situation yeah. here, and we're we're just starting to get back into it. But it and, was at uh, Papa Sean's, and then eventually yeah. what Viva Cantina. Yeah, that was another place. We were kind of, you know, we yeah, that was the that was the, yeah, we we were there for a while too, that you know. So but we were at a place called Spazio's uh for about eight years and that was that was really uh very successful there. That was at, at the peak of it. We and we did it every week and we wow. packed the place every week, you know. Yeah, it got quite to be uh, popular, you know. I guess most of these places are unfortunately gone now. Yeah, yeah, yeah they folded up. And... Dance with me, I want my arms about you. The charms about you. Carry 